The really disturbing thing is that I don't think that literature as such or other forms of discourse uh, has really uh, woken up to this at all. The problem is not, I think, just merely indifference. It's being able to find a way to tell these very difficult stories, these stories in which often there are no human protagonists, you know. I think it's important for literature to address this issue is not because I think literature can solve the problem. Obviously, literature can't, you know. Literature has always prided itself on, um, on looking at the great issues of the moment. If you look at the literature of the past, if you look even at the Mahabharata, or if you look at the uh, scriptures of literally every religion, uh, they confront the issues of climate, of uh, 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 you know catastrophic events. All of this uh, enters into them, you know. But uh, if you look at if you look at the, the the direction the arts have taken over the last two hundred years. Actually, we've gone further and further away from those kinds of engagements. And that is really the question that arises, you know, for me. That is, why is it that modernity has taken this course, which simultaneously is destroying us and closing our eyes to what is happening around us? Now, you, speak of, uh, you spoke of uh, our political systems. It's perfectly clear. Anybody who looks at the nature of the of the catastrophe that is that is unfolding around us, climate change is not in the future. It's happening now, and yet the ways in which our political structures, our structures of governance, are complete have proved themselves to be completely incapable of uh, even recognizing the nature of the, uh, the nature of the problem. And the more we look at it, the more clear it is that they cannot that these. Uh, our governmental structures are such that they cannot respond to issues of this kind. You look at, say, what President Obama has been saying. On the one hand, he speaks a lot about climate change. At the same time, you know, uh, he's opened up offshore drilling. He's made no effort, really, to stop leasing enormous amounts of methane into the atmosphere. Our government also speaks about climate change, which is greatly to its credit. At the same time, it's also opening up huge coal mining leases and so on. So, you know, it's clear that it's not, it's not any one institution. All our institutions are in this circumstance where uh, you know, they say one thing and they do something completely different. Australia, Canada, you know, America, uh, New Zealand somewhat less. But even in Britain, there has been a strong uh, element of climate denialism. You can see that actually it arises out of the nature of the history of these countries. You know? They were settler colonies. They arrived uh, at these incredibly resource-rich continents, and they created this very predatory model of economy. The truly catastrophic thing is that this model of economy, this highly extractive, resource-intensive model of economy, following the 1980s, became the global paradigm, became the paradigm to which China and India now aspire. And that is the true catastrophe. I, your question is whether I feel that I'll be a part of the solution. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to say that I don't think there is a solution. <laughs>